My name is Etienne Bernard. I work at Wolfram. And uh, today I'm going to talk about how to learn automatically distribution from data. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to this talk. Uh, so my name is uh, Etienne Bernard. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a new function uh, that will be there in version 12 of the language that is called learn distribution. And uh, the goal of this function, as its name indicates, is to learn a probability distribution uh, from, from data. So, um, so actually, so what, what kind of data are we talking about? Um, so it could be very simple uh, data. Let's say I just have um, a list of a categorical variable that can be A or B. Uh, here, uh, learning distribution will just be about, uh, you know, estimating the frequency of, of each, uh, each possibility. It could be a numeric variable. Uh, so an example, uh, histogram would be a way to learn distribution uh, from, a, from a, this uh, uh, unidimensional uh, numeric uh, variable. Um, but of course, it can be also uh, higher dimension. So here is an example in two dimension, where the goal will be to go from this, uh, this data set of two dimensional values uh, to uh, 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 function that can compute the PDF, uh, so the probability density in that case, uh, for any point of, of, of the space. Um, but of course, we can go further and, and we can mix uh, numerical variable and nominal variable. So we start uh, um, to define distribution here on, on data sets, on classic uh, structured data. Um, uh, like in that case, where you have a class that is a nominal and then you have the age that is a numerical. Um, and we can extend this notion of, of distribution to, let's say, images uh, or text or audio and many other things. So that is the goal of learn distribution. Um, by the way, I should warn you straight away, currently the text and audio and everything that is viable size, is, it won't be in 12. So it's going to be the next version. Uh, but, but image and all that other stuff uh, will work. Okay, so why do we want to learn uh, distribution? Well, I like to say it's a holy grail of unsupervised learning because um, probably the, the hardest task to actually assess the distribution, especially when you have a high dimensional uh, data set. And you can do a lot of things uh, with distribution. Uh, the most straightforward thing is to generate new examples, okay? Which might be, might be useful. Uh, Another of its application, and actually you can use random variate with uh, learn distribution we will, uh, uh, that we'll show after. Um, another important application is anomaly detection. Since you have a, a, a function to compute the probability mass or probability density of the data, uh, then you can, um, if someone gives you a new example, you can compute this probability. And if it's very, very low, well, it's a sign that it doesn't been uh, sample, so to speak, from the distribution that you learn. It's, it's out of distribution sample. It's an outlier. And that's how you can, you can tell that it's an anomaly. And uh, we have a function that is called anomaly detection in 12 that is based on the distribution. And uh, Amir is going to talk about it in, uh, in an hour. So uh, you can also predict any variables as a function of others. Because when you have a distribution, you can condition it. You can say, okay, I know that x, y, z are equal to these values, so what is the value of t? Can you predict t as a function of the other? So it's a bit like a, a classifier or a predictor, but that can work for any variables. So here you can see that the tasks that is to solve that is, is I mean, you can guess that the task is more complex than just a classifier that focuses on predicting one variable. Here it's kind of a predictor that, that focuses on predicting any variable. And because you can predict any variable, you can, for example, fill in missing values. If I train a distribution, I give a new example, there's some missing values. You can condition the distribution on the value that you know, and let's say sample the value that you don't know, or find the most likely values, values that you don't know. And, um, and there would be a function in 12 as well, synthesize missing values. And there's other things. So you can do, for example, denoising or error correction. Uh, this won't be in 12. This was still uh, uh, trying to figure out how we can make that uh, efficient. But here the idea is, let's say I, I have a, a distribution and I have a, a data point that is corrupted in some way. Some noise or some error, some corruption. And 
how can I make this? So it will actually be considered an anomaly. Like if I pass it through the anomaly detector, it will say, well, the PDF of this thing is too low. It's an anomaly. So the goal of denoising, I mean, at least that's one way to formalize it, will be to uh, make this sample back into the distribution. So, so one way we could do it, at least conceptually, is to take this corrupted sample and then try to climb the PDF. So trying to go in the, let's say, with the gradient ascent to make the probability of this sample more likely. And as soon as it reach a probability that is okay, then we say, all right, that's, that's a corrected example. That's a denoise example. So, so that's another um, application that should follow from land distribution, although this one is a bit harder to put in practice. Um, then you can, of course, ask for expectations or probabilities. You can say, well, I have my distribution. So what is the probability that, I don't know, age is above 30 and sex is female and the person, I don't remember what was uh, that I said that I was showing, and the person survived. Can you compute that? So you can do these sort of queries, probabilistic queries, and there are many, many others you can do. Um, so we're not going to, yeah, uh, support many of these at first, but I hope they will come later. Um, find uh, variable that share information. So that's, a, you know, uh, usually if you want to know if two variables are, have, have some share information, you usually do a simple correlation, a linear correlation. And this is quite brittle because you can have uh, variables that, are, that share a lot of information but are not linearly correlated. correlated. So, so one way to that would be to compute mutual information which requires modeling distributions. And, uh, and um, this again is something we have to experiment with, but uh, we should be able to do um, mutual information function based on learned distribution. Uh, all right, and supervised learning is another, another application. If you have data, some are labeled, some are not labeled, uh, you, can, you can actually treat that as a missing value problem. Uh, that, that the label that I'm missing is just another variable and, uh, and you could learn the distribution on this whole set or you could do all sort of, of tricks uh, to take advantage of this unlabeled data. And there's probably other application that I haven't thought of. It's quite of a, it's quite of a powerful thing when you have the distribution of, uh, of data. All right, so let me show you in practice. Learn distribution, so let's start something extremely simple, all right, just a nominal uh, space. Here there's just five examples. So you see, you just give data sets. So it's probably the simplest of the machine learning functions because you don't need to have labels, you don't need to have anything, you just give data. And, uh, and then you say learn distribution of this data and it returns a learned distribution. Note the small differences. We haven't found a better name, fortunately. They're pretty similar. And then you can start doing things. So I can, I can do random variates, which are the, uh, where the existing symbols uh, uh, that work on, on classic uh, distributions of the language. So, okay, just random variates, all right, with A, great. Let's do 100, okay. Um, then you can query the PDF. So I can say, what is the probability of A? Okay, well, uh, something like this. Yes, this is this is uh, uh, independently sampled. Uh, yeah. Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. True. Okay, good, good thing. So this one assume independent samples, like classifier, predict, and others. Um, we, yeah. Why did it produce point four two instead of point four? Because there are some smoothing. So so yeah. So the goal is to really generalize to a test set. It's not to try to you know, maximize the likelihood on, on the training set. So, so you will see things like that. Um, so here it will go, I guess, what, what it should be. It should be 0 0.4, you're right, and 0 0.42. Uh, it's because it assumed that, yeah, it put a little bit of smoothing because it assumed it does not enough sample to, um, okay. Hmm? But the sum, exactly, <laughs> that, that's it. Uh, but, the, but the sum should be one, the sum should be one. And um, so that's, okay, two things you can do. Here, imputing missing value doesn't, uh, not much interest. Uh, where probability, I, can, I will talk later. Okay, so let, let's, let's look at a numerical space, a numeric space here. So two-dimensional, that's the one I was showing before. Uh, okay, so let's do learn distribution. Uh, Iris, I should have put that before, whatever. Okay, so it learned distribution. It was, okay, we didn't see much. 
Uh, oh, something I should show you is that you can also have information about the distribution. Uh, in the same way as you, you have this for, for classify, predict. It, by the way, in the past it was uh, classifier information, pre to information. Now for 12, we're kind of moving everything into something called information. That works for basically everything in the language. So, um, so and you can see a bit of, of um, information here. So it's a kernel density estimation with a Gaussian kernel type that's been selected and so on. Uh, you can also have a, have a clue of what's happening in the automation. Um, so we'll talk about that a bit later, but the, the, it's the same type of automation of a classify and predict where uh, uh, the system perform experiments on small training set and figure out what works best on this small training set and try to uh, infer what would work best on the big training set in order not to have to try everything on the big training set because it's slower to train on a big training set. And so that's why, as a byproduct, we have this learning curve. So with only something like know, eight example here, uh, this was uh, the loss. With 30 example, we, we are here. With 200, we are here. And here is kind of the, the learning curves for all the algorithms that have been tested. So uh, multinormal has been tested, contingency table. But kernel density estimation is picked in the end. OK, so let's look at the, uh, both the, the, the sample, sampled, sorry, the training data and the estimated density in that case. Uh, okay, so, so it looks like this. And uh, let's do, for example, as a, just to understand what's happening, uh, let's use synthesized missing values on this distribution where, let's put 6.5 for now. Um, so the x value here is 6.5 and the y value is missing. So really what's going to happen is that the, the, the distribution will condition itself on the fact that x equals 6.5, and then sample according to this condition distribution. So you should have a result between four and six. And all right, something, something pretty close, so you can see. Uh, we can also um, uh, plot a histogram, oh, actually I put 6.5, yes? So this is just a stochastic function that returns a different value at any Yes, yes. So Which that's is, why you got exactly, exactly. Which is, I mean, for 0.42, it's a bit different. This was a, a, for the training. Uh, but for the specific case of imputing missing values, it will sample from the condition distribution, which is very important because um, then you can do that many times and, and see a bit the confidence you have on uh, your imputation. Um, and also, if you want to compute means or compute some statistical properties, it's useful to have a sample. Yes? At, at, at the moment, it assumes uh, that it is continuous, even if you have integers. And this is a very interesting question because in practice, people give data that are rounded. So if somebody uh, gave a data set, uh, I mean, actually, what was uh, an example? Yeah, actually, <laughs> Stephen often, often tried to learn a distribution on his heartbeat. And it's always around it to an integer, you know, 89 bit per minute, uh, you know, and so on. And um, often you, you expect the system to, to, to understand this as, an, as a continuous distribution and not a discrete distribution. So we haven't really solved that problem. I want to give a possibility to, if it's discrete, you know, that it learns discrete, but often I would like this function to assume uh, what 99% of the case the user intended. Uh, Yes? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Uh, this is, uh, I will talk about it a bit later. I mean, in the future. Uh, that's something I would like to, but yeah, okay, not yet. Uh, okay, so you can see here it gives a histogram. Uh, if I put, let's say, 5.5, here we should have a bimodal thing because 5.5 is here. So you can see in 5.5 it should have. Uh, that would be the, the, here you go, that's, that's kind of the, that's actually kind of the conditional distribution of, uh, and, uh, oh, by the way, you, you have a method, so I can put method mod finding. Oop, mod finding, and this should, but this approximate, it tries to find the mode. Uh, so in that case, it will be 1.5. Uh, actually, it's still a little bit stochastic in that case, but it's something that is much closer to the, to the mode. 
because there's no exact uh, uh, way to find the mode. Okay, uh, all right, so let's show another example, this time on the data sets, so with numerical and nominal uh, variable and missing values. Uh, and you can just learn the distribution on this, and all right, so you can see how it takes a little bit more time here, so you can see the learning curve in action. Uh, and then I can again random variate, let's say 10 examples, that's, that's what, well, that's interesting, it, it, it's actually a negative age. Oh wow, contingency table, huh. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not that surprising because it didn't figure out that the thing was only positive, uh, but I'm, I'm surprised by the magnitude. Uh, normally it shouldn't just be like minus 0 0.01 or something like that. Uh, I, could, I could put, so okay, let, let's do this. I could put, let's say you're not in a rush, I'm going to do 20 seconds. Um, and so here it will try more models uh, and hopefully the result will be better uh, than the first version that took five seconds. Uh, hopefully we won't have negative value now. Yeah? What? Okay, the, no, 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 the system will infer that it is, no, no, in that case, one, two, three, it will figure out it's a nominal variable. Not just because it's a string. If you put one, two, three of integer, it will figure out it's nominal. And uh, then maybe not. There's some heuristic, but then you can force it with the option feature types. You can say this feature is nominal, this feature is numerical. Yeah, yeah, you can force it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought you meant numeric but discrete, which is a bit different. Um, all right, so here I can run variate. Hopefully in that case, there won't be any negative, yes. Oh yeah, there's still negative, okay, well. Well, <laughs> oh, maybe I should check that, I should check that, yeah. Um, and you can also ask for the PDF, so let's say these are the samples, and I can say PDF. I mean, it's, up. All right, so let's, uh, let's continue. Oh yeah, I want to show just, uh, here are two examples that are, that are with some missing values, and I can do synthesize missing values, first argument is a distribution, and to impute, and they would be imputed. Okay, and you can also actually do that directly in the data set. Uh, it will learn a distribution on the data set, and then impute everything if you do something like that. So I think in that case, there was only one value that was missing in the beginning. Yeah, you can see this one. Uh, but this one, so after 80, should be imputed. So actually, you can see it's a 4.3. Well, as you see, it interpret that as a numerical variable, and it's a 4.3. Um, all right, so okay, some, some other random examples. I'm, I'm going to go quick on that to talk about methods and, and other things. So let's say on distribution, uh, you can ask for, for PDF. Uh, so you can see this one is out of distribution, and it's a very, very low PDF. Um, oh, an interesting function we um, introduced is a rare probability, which is related to the PDF, but actually gives, according to the distribution, what is the probability that this distribution samples, uh, um, random, sample an example that has a lower PDF than this example. Okay, maybe a bit hard to wrap your head around that. It's kind of an extension of p-value uh, for uh, arbitrary uh, dimension, and that's really nice to define anomalies. It's kind of an anomaly score. It's, it's what is the probability to have uh, an event that is rarer according to the distribution, an event that is more extreme according to the distribution. So if the probability is, um, um, uh, 10 minus 3, then it's very, very, very unlikely to have something rarer than what you gave. So it's probably a, an anomaly. Whereas if it's uh, something like, if we take this one, it's probably going to be something around 0 0.5, let's see. This is something sam from, the, um, from the samples, actually. So this probably is going to be 0 0.46. So there's just one chance out of two to have something more likely or less likely. Yeah. No, you don't need them. Oh, oh, in that case, yes, 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 sorry, sorry. It's, I think it's the RGB, yes, yes, yes. I think that. 
Yes, yes, except the space is not clearly defined. So that's a bit of a, actually I'm going to talk about image just after, okay, so okay, date. You can learn distribution on date as well. Uh, random variates, fine, uh, okay. Um, images, so images, this will take a little bit of time, so I'm not going to train, it will take four minutes to train this, this. So I'm not going to do it, I'm going to grab something that is already somewhere. Oh, I put it in notebook, great. Uh, so here you have a bunch of uh, low resolution uh, images. Already learned the distribution. And uh, now let's do some samples. Here are some samples for the image. Uh, I think they look pretty, although they're not very realistic. <laughs> and this is because it's, uh, uh, um, it's just you know, a classic, in that case it's actually multinormal that will be uh, the, the best. So it's not a, an algorithm that is more uh, powerful enough to get realistic image. Uh, this is because obtaining realistic image is a very, very hard problem. So currently you would, for example, train uh, a general, uh, adversarial, uh, generative adversarial network uh, for you know, many hours uh, to get something decent and on a restricted setting, uh, not with uh, many variables. Um, uh, nevertheless, it's already useful. Distribution is already useful. For example, you can clearly distinguish uh, which image. So here I have an image from the training set, an image from the test set, the samples from uh, the distribution, an image from another data set, and then a random image. And if I get the probability of this, you can see that the image of the training set is 10 to the power 2,000, this is 10 to the power almost 2,000 from the test set, and from the other data set, it's 10 minus 600. And a random image is very, very low. Actually, the log would be more readable in that case. Um, so we can already clearly uh, perform an anomaly detection task using this distribution even though it doesn't give realistic samples. And we really hope in the future to be able to have extremely realistic sample even with a small amount of data, uh, like, like we will give uh, here, uh, by the use of, of, of transfer learning. But transfer learning for learning distribution, it's much harder than for unsupervised learning. For unsupervised learning, you just take a network, you cut it, you create a feature extractor, and, and you train on top of that. For distribution, you cannot just extract features the way you want. It has to be reversible, for example. You can also do feature extraction, but the feature extractor have to be uh, without loss of information and, and reversible. And that's not something we have at the moment, a good reversible feature extractor. There could be other ways to do transfer learning, but they are really not as straightforward. But that's something I really want us to, to, to figure out how to do. Um, Maybe with a reversible, like there are some neural networks that are reversible and that people are used to train distributions. And uh, hopefully we can use these networks to, to create a nice reversible feature extractor. And that would be, I mean, that's something I haven't seen in any paper. Um, and I hope we, we, we can do it, where you can just give a few pictures, let's say 20 or, or 50, and it actually like, like uh, say cats or whatever, and it actually learn or, or something that was not even in the, in the training set of this uh, reversible neural network. And, um, and I can actually learn from small amount of sample and give realistic uh, uh, dreamed image, so to speak. Uh, but anyway, this might take a bit of time. That was a question, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Maybe you can see well, but it's actually, you know, it's actually, I mean, what I meant is sample that look like the training set. That's what I meant. These don't really look like the training set, you know. You know, there's like a lot of colors. Maybe from, from your, you know, there's a lot of colors. There's some statistics that have been captured by it, but clearly there's a lot of missing things. Okay, uh, then text sound sequence. Well, as I told you before, it's not there yet, so we don't support viable length uh, data, but it will be in the, in the, in the following version. Okay, so I'm going to talk very quickly because actually I don't have that much time. So these are the methods that are inside. So you have things like multinormal, which is really a Gaussian, Gaussian distribution, uh, things like Gaussian mixtures. So in that case, if you train that on, on this iris data set, it will uh, find two, two uh, uh, normal distributions. Uh, contingency table, so it's something, it's a, what, the most simple algorithm for distribution, which is just you kind of uh, separate uh, variables into buckets, and then you count 
uh, you can do a table of all the counts, um, kernel density estimation, uh, decision trees, so, so something that partitions space by asking questions to the, to the data. Uh, Real NVP is one of these reversible networks, so we did an implementation, it's very experimental. Uh, don't expect, it's not part of the automation, so it's something you can opt in if you want to try, maybe on your data it works well, who knows. Uh, but, but again, this is quite experimental. And in the future, we hope we'll be able to, to, uh, to implement things like random forest or uh, recurrent neural network based solution to handle viable length uh, data and other methods. You can, you can see the list here. So I would like to talk a little bit on automation. I already mentioned that in the talk, so I can be fast. Um, it's something very similar to classify and predict, right? Where we start with a set of configuration, then we train configuration on small test sets, so we do experiments. And then we, we try to predict how well would uh, configuration, by configuration I mean methods and hyperparameters, uh, how well would they work on the final training set. Um, and uh, fortunately there's many problems that, that came out when doing this function is that it's much more brittle than unsupervised learning. If you have repeated elements that can mess up things. If you have like repeated example, even repeat, a variable that repeats itself for some reason, it can mess things. Um, uh, you cannot do, I talked about it before, uh, feature extraction uh, as easily and, uh, and so on. And some model, you cannot compute the PDF easily. Okay, so that is for the distribution. And so in the future, we'll try to implement other methods, have good feature extractor for image, sound, and maybe text. And, uh, and as also it was asked before, um, be able to do transformation distribution, such as marginalizing or conditioning. Uh, and there is this future function we hope to, to be able to implement thanks to learn distribution. Okay, thank you very much.